Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, ERC from the field uh, session, where I am pleased to uh, host uh, Federico Semeraro from uh, Italy. Federico, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Fine, and how are you doing, Federico? Fine, thanks, better, thank you. Federico, I imagine it has been uh, some hard times in, uh, in Italy. Um, can you tell us uh, what, what was your role and what is your uh, position uh, in, in the hospital during this crisis? Yeah, uh, Nicolas, I, I am a consultant in anesthesia and intensive care in Maggiore Hospital Bologna, Italy. Here in uh, Emilia Romagna, everything started around 21st of February. Emilia Romagna was one of the most affected Italian region during COVID-19 outbreak February 2020. Uh, Emilia Romagna had two main outbreaks, uh, one in the western part of the region involving the province of Piacenza and the other uh, in the eastern part involving uh, the province of Rimini. We, we, be, we became the second region affected by COVID-19 pandemic after Lombardia. At the moment, fortunately, the situation is improving over the last two weeks. And I was involved in intensive care in EMS and uh, we'll talk about the EMS situation in Bologna. Okay, uh, Federico, how was that situation in the, in the field? EMS received different, I can say, waves. The first wave was on dispatch center. We received a lot of calls uh, from our region. We started from around 1,100 calls on February 17, and we arrived to 3,200 on February 24. We sent a letter to editor uh, to resuscitation about the integrated response to the impact of coronavirus outbreak on the EMS of Emilia Romagna. It was published in March, but uh, will be available in the number of June. Mainly, a lot of citizens were cared about COVID-19 and requested information to emergency number, and mainly the government gave information to call EMS in case of need. The second wave was on the field, very hard. We or reorganized the pathway in hospital, in the emergency department. We tried to build a clean, a, a dirty pathway in the field in relation, obviously, to lockdown. The number of services decreased quickly, less trauma patients, less calls, but obviously a significant increase in COVID-19 calls. Okay, we, we heard a lot uh, of, of, from Italy in the, in the media and uh, I was wondering how, how did you organize yourself with regard to personal protection? Do you, you have enough uh, personal protection materials? Uh, were there very early protocols on how to, to use them? Yeah, fortunately we, uh, we have two, three weeks in comparison to Lombardia to prepare ourselves in Emilia Romagna. In the field we worked with glasses, FFP2, gloves, and go on or sweet. We built obviously a decontamination procedure and ob obviously we spent a lot of time on rebuild specific uh, procedure at interim for every disease. Okay, well, the, the airway management clearly is the, the most uh, riskful uh, situation. Uh, how, how did you approach that? How did you manage uh, in the early beginnings? Uh, we decide to apply for every patient with a respiratory problem, standard approach with mask reservoir, with surgical mask on top to reduce the risk of droplet for every patient. We dramatically reduced the use of CPAP and obviously when needed, we intubate that patient with full PPE protection as soon as possible. Okay, we now have luckily uh, COVID guidelines from uh, ERC, but uh, how did you manage cardiac arrest in those early beginnings? We decided to suggest chest compression only always in every situation with passive oxygenation by mask reservoir and surgical mask on top. Everybody full protected with PPE, obviously. A fast approach to our way with intubation if uh, available video lar laryngoscopy. And in case of problem, uh, as a, a second chance, laryngeal tube was used. Again, a fast connection with ventilator and when available, chest compressor. Okay, well, clearly a few weeks have 
past uh, now and it seems like uh, we're going to a slowly uh, exit strategy. What are your concerns or fears for the, the next future? Uh, we have two, two concerns. The first is about phase two. At the moment, it, it is a real challenge to maintain a clean, a dirty pathway. It could be complicated to recognize COVID-19 patients in the field. Second concern is about the behavior of general population. They are overall, overall worried to come to hospital. As reported in many countries, we, we receive a lot of patients with acute myocardial infarction already in the late phase. And obviously, we are also worried about the bystander CPR rate that could be deeply affected by COVID-19. Okay, and to conclude, well, one could say never waste a good crisis. Uh, do you have any projects, any uh, things you could uh, take from this uh, crisis for the, for the future? At the moment, we are working on the same project about recognition of patients directly at home with the use of national earning warning score applied in the field. Uh, in, I can say, off-label uh, use of news. We sent a message in the battle to inter for international colleagues uh, with a letter to editor recently. Our purpose is to build an app able to help citizen to recognize deterioration directly at home, integrated with the EMS activation. This is the project for near future, yeah. Okay, looks very promising. Federico, yeah. thank you very much for your time uh, during those uh, special uh, circumstances, uh, and I hope you stay uh, safe there in Italy. Thank you, Nicolas. Stay safe and live long and prosperous, as usual. A pleasure to have you, Federico. Ciao. Bye-bye.